Greetings YouTube man and welcome back to another Diablo video. Um, I guess this would be more like a showcase of Diablo 2 Resurrected and like an update uh, of where I'm at. Oh wow, look at that. Blizzard North. Is it going to go directly into... Okay, yeah, very good. Um, but yes, before I begin, uh, I want to start this off by giving a huge, huge thank you and a huge shout out to my very dear, longtime friend. I'm going to say a YouTube friend, but uh, we've uh, known each other for nearly 10 years and he even brought this up on one of his streams. Uh, and uh, we've been friends for a while, you know, quite, quite a long time and... Um, Oh, and we've we've gotten to know each other uh, quite a bit. That it doesn't feel like it's just like a like a YouTube thing, you know, like a YouTube friendship. It's it's almost as if like we've we've actually met, you know, like virtually um, met, but 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 like met in real life kind of thing. And so he's almost like a, a friend in real life. Now, there are a few people um, that I could say that about uh, here on YouTube and um, yeah you know we're all part of the Adventures Guild which is a YouTube well not YouTube which is a Facebook uh, group, pa group page um, and there's a uh, few people that I could say that about where I'm like really really close and, and Todd E. Walnut is uh, the exceptional few uh, so I want to thank him because um, my birthday about a few months or so back it was back in May uh, he wanted to gift me a game via Steam, and uh, it was during that time when he was doing a, a stream of Days Gone, and it intrigued me, and I would, I would attend his streams every so often, and uh, it's like a post-apocalyptic uh, third-person uh, shooter with RPG elements to it, and um, uh, we had discovered that it is actually coming to uh, PC on Steam and it's out already now and uh, he wanted to either gift it to me via Steam but he wasn't exactly sure how to go about doing that as he doesn't have a Steam account so he thought that he would just gift me the money PayPal to me and then I would get the game so you know a couple of weeks or so go by and I discover that uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected uh, was going to be coming soon. That there was a thing called Diablo 2 Resurrected. And uh, when the money came through, I asked him, well, you know what? As excited I am for Days Gone, would it be okay if I used that money to get Diablo 2 Resurrected instead? And he said, yeah, sure, okay. Uh, you know, that money is uh, really yours to get whatever game you want. So uh, I decided to get Diablo 2 Resurrected. And, you know, I, I showed him like a trailer of it and, and, um, you know other videos and uh, he kind of uh, liked what he saw and there's a possibility he might get this game himself on PS4 and uh, hopefully sometime soon uh, Blizzard is going to enable uh, cross play platform play so meaning that all consoles and PC will be able to play with each other you know all on one server somehow um, I know they've done that with some other games, um, so hopefully they'll be able to do that with this one, not necessarily Blizzard or Vicarious Visions. Um, but anyways, thank you so much, Todd. Thank you, thank you. Please head on over to Todd E. Walnut's channel, and please subscribe to him there. He does, like, movie updates and stuff, and lately he's been doing streams. He's streaming... Uh, a game he just recently got it called Dying Light, which is also available on PC, and he is streaming that game on his gaming channel, so not his Toddy Walnuts channel. Uh, his gaming channel is Dagon the King Killer. So please head on over to that channel as well and give him a subscription or give him a sub over there too. Subscribe to both his channels, you know, Toddy Walnuts and uh, Dagon the King Killer. It doesn't cost anything. He's a great guy, and he's very interactive on the streams, and you type something, he'll acknowledge you. Great, great guy, okay? So, thank you, Todd. Much love to you, my brother. Okay, so, um, yeah, hold on. Before I actually...
get into Diablo 2 Resurrected. Uh, I wanted to take things back to Diablo, you know, 1996 when this came out, the original Diablo, uh, you know, put out by Blizzard, and um, this is my Felagar here, level 17. Now uh, this game, when this first came out, I hope the volume isn't too loud, you know, the music. Might have to lower this. Okay. Uh, when this first came out, uh, you know, in 1996, uh, my brother and I and a small circle of friends became highly addicted to this game. Uh, and it is a, a great uh, RPG, you know, action RPG. Up until this point, you know, before Diablo... Uh, you know, the kind of RPGs I would play were mostly first person, like Bard's Tale, uh, Ultima Underworld, Might and Magic. Uh, and then there's, of course, you know, the occasional um, third person, like uh, the, the Ultima series. I started with Ultima 3, um, uh, Ultima 3 uh, Exodus, and then U Ultima 4 Quest of the Avatar. Uh, and wasn't able to play, uh, you know, I kind of uh, lost touch of the Ultima. Uh, games. I just kept playing four, and then next thing you know, there was Ultima Seven, and I was not able to play that game because my PC was not strong enough at the time. But I saw a bit of it, and uh, I have since then, you know, experimented with it, uh, and it is a pretty cool game. Um, maybe one day I may go back to that and do like a like a special let's play of that. But who knows? Um, <clears throat> yeah. So when this came out it was such a different kind of RPG you know and hence why it's uh, a, a new a genre called ARPG which is action RPG and the way combat is handled is you know it's a isometric uh, point of view of the game and it's an RPG in the sense that you know you're playing a character class that you picked, you name your character, you level them up, and you know you distribute the attribute points. Uh, there are no skills or skill points. Uh, those come in the way of books that you learn. Interesting thing about this game is not only does a sorcerer learn the spell books, but even if you play a rogue or a warrior, uh, they could learn these spells as well. Maybe not to the level, the extent or the level that the sorcerer can and um, they won't be able to shoot off the spells as quickly as the sorcerer um, but that's the uh, the special ability of the sorcerer it's uh, you don't have like a bunch of skills you just have something that you're uh, adept at you know f so for the uh, the, the sorcerer it's spells you know, shooting them off and and and, 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 and a faster cast rate uh, for the warrior, it's like a, a, a quicker, faster hit recovery and being able to attack with melee weapons uh, with such speed and vigor. Uh, the rogue is uh, with the same level of speed and vigor uh, that she lets loose her arrows with, with a bow. Um, she could also, uh, the rogue could also disarm traps. Uh, the warrior can repair weapons, but each time he repairs it, it diminishes it a little bit. Just like the um, the sorcerer can recharge a staff, you know, with certain amounts of charges. But say if it had, let's say, 30 charges, after you recharge it yourself, it may now only have 27 or 26 charges. So each time you charge it, uh, it diminishes it a little bit. Uh, and this was a a really really cool game at the time I absolutely love this game and and even now I still really really enjoy it I still love it it's it's not my favorite of the series and I don't have that same feeling that I had about this game you know back in 96 and I have some let's plays uh, out of this game and I don't want to linger too much on this game what the want to get out this way um, 
Okay, here we go. Uh, that that is now reserved for another Diablo game that just recently came out, and I still feel this way about something like um, like Skyrim. <clears throat> so then, after uh, this game came out, I think it was in like 2000, 2001, uh, this little game called <laughs> Diablo 2 came out. And this is what it looked like. And once again, when this game came out, you know, all that addictiveness that I had once I had for Diablo 1 this land of the shadow. now transitioned over to this. You know? I mean, this is... Wow, I don't want to get too hooked up on this, but, uh, um, yeah, this game was great, and what differentiated itself from the first game, let me get to someplace safe, no one will attack me, I guess I could just go back into town, uh, you know, it's the same isometric, you know, kind of bird's eye view as the first one, but now, instead of just walking and moving so slow um, you really feel it when you're trudging along in town but even when you're just down in the dungeons and the caves and wherever you're just you're you don't run so now I'm glad they added this you know this run feature and you pretty much always run you know, there's no need to, to walk and you have a stamina bar right here uh, it was had familiar uh, interface like here and if I was to level up you know what maybe I'll try to go ahead and do that yeah forget it it might take a little while uh, you would have points and you can distribute it into your uh, attributes strength dex vite energy although in Diablo it was called magic I believe not energy yeah and instead of spell books you now have skill sets three trees for, so, for example, you know, each class has uh, three skill um, skill trees. Uh, the Am uh, yeah, the Amazon has javelin and spear, and then a passive and magic, and bow and crossbow. And each of these skills were unique to that specific class, you know. So you don't learn books any longer. And this really, really appealed to me because you could really design the kind of character that you wanted and I guess I could talk a little bit more about this one since we're going to be eventually going back to this game but uh, so that's what I love about this you know you can max out a skill um, with 20 hard points and uh, there's 99 levels and you earn a skill point but and and you can earn skill points through certain quests that you do but you're not gonna be able to max every single skill, you know, so you have to kind of plan things out. Which ones do you wanna max? Which ones do you wanna just put one point, you know, so it's like a one point a wonder kind of uh, skill, or maybe you just wanna put a few points, or like five or six points into it. So uh, I really love that, you know, and it's it was very familiar, and there was just more to it, see, I could do Look at that. I could throw my javelins, you know, if I was a, a sorcerer, sorceress, you know, the first one you're a sorcerer, but a sorceress, um, you have magic, and then there's the, uh, uh, the what, what is that, the, what do they call it, old reliable spell, fire bolt, and then fireball, those are the two reliable uh, spells in a, a, a mage's arsenal, just like uh, it was the first spell I believe or was it charge bolt that you get it's probably um, the first spell book that almost everyone will learn as a sorcerer in Diablo 1 to learn firebolt and then later on upgrade that to uh, fireball but you know, of course and you can go lightning uh, hold on how do I uh, ah here we go now you can go like the lightning route and the charge bolt route uh, as you can see, I have perspective mode on. See, 
I remember back in the day when playing this, my computer was having a little issue. It was like an older computer and it was beginning to, uh, the games were beginning to outpace, um, the games were beginning to outpace the, uh, my computer, you know, the kind of games I could play. So look how it looks when it's, the perspective is off, the way it moves, how the camera moves and follows you. Okay, and now, see how it feels a little different? Like the camera, I can't explain it, but it feels like it's, it feels more like 3D, although I know that's probably not the word for it. Achilles! Sorry, it just made me feel like Achilles. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, uh, where was I, where did I leave off? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, so, also, just like with Diablo 1, you had, like, normal, you had nightmare, you had hell, uh, this one has those three modes as well, and, um, uh, and I, I lost my train of thought, hold on. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I think I'm, I'm pretty much at the end of talking about this game. You see what happens? I, I got caught up. Good day. Uh, you know, playing the game. I forgot what I'm, you know, gonna say. Oh, this is your stash and... Well, here, we, we won't get into that. Um, this can't be helped. The stash, because I'm using D2R to showcase regular D, D2R, you know, to showcase regular D2. Uh, the stash was a lot smaller than this you know so this can't be helped i can't show what it used to look like but it was a lot smaller but anyways um this game you know lasted me several years you know i remember uh one time during the um the 9 11 I, I get a call in the morning and uh i haven't seen a wand yet Okay, hold on. That's my friend Trajan. Hold on, I'll, I'll respond to him later. Uh, hold on, maybe I should just let him know. Hold on. Good day. Okay, yeah, I let him know. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, and he called me like in the morning, and said, "Hey, you know, Felagar, you're not gonna believe what just happened." And then I said, "Well, what?" You found like uh, a unique, or you got over to to nightmare, or you got over to hell, something like that. Talking about Diablo two, Good day. and he said, "Oh no, fuck D, we're at war. Turn on, turn on th your TV and put on the news." So I put it on, and it's of course you know 9/11 with the, uh, the the twin towers and, and the plane crashing into it. So we watched that for a little bit, and then after about 10 minutes. You know, he just said, well, okay, you want to get on D? And I said, yeah, so we got back into playing this. Uh, after a while, you know, we we started to uh, get a little burnt out on the game and moved on to other games. And um, I got involved in a Dungeons & Dragons group. And I'm talking about the old uh, pen and paper, you know, D&D &D with the, the, the Good day. dice, you know, tabletop. And uh, someone in that group, which it was a ever expanded group, it, it was something that only started with like f uh, five of us, you know, my DM, my brother, little Brian and his wife, uh, and then it just kind of grew to like big Brian, Dave, or we call him Gay Dave because yeah, he, he was gay and I guess he didn't mind the nickname, so his name was Gay Dave, um, and then we have big Brian, little Brian. Gretchen, and then there was uh, Grazia, Bruce, Bruce Lombardo, Grazia, his girl, uh, uh, Vita, his girlfriend, and Grazia is the sister, doesn't matter. Um, and there was one particular dude uh, named Rogi, his nickname. I think his uh, real name was like Matt or Matthew or something, but he just went by Rogi. And for whatever reason, uh, I don't know how it happened, we started talking about. Uh, Diablo. You know what? It just hit me here. I, I gotta uh, preface this to going back to when Bruce and I started playing Diablo 2. Uh, I started 
playing it, you know, before, you know, I, I met Bruce when, where I went to school. And, um, uh, and I played it with another friend named George Tung. And we worked at PC King together and we were addicted. And I, I remember perusing through the, the PC gamer magazines and, and all the little advertisements of um, Diablo 2. They, they would like every, I don't know, when, when this is when PC magazines were you know, pretty thick, you know, every like 10, 15 pages or so, there would be like uh, something showcasing a class, like an Amazon or the Paladin. It said something, uh, a Zacharum. Uh, whose whose faith whose faith is his shield you know there, there'd be a little uh, inscription as to uh, describing their class well anyways um, so you know after um, uh, George and I, I lost contact with them he like moved away uh, and then I went to school I went to school to DeVry and um, I was talking with another friend there that I met and he was like heavy into music and stuff like that. We're talking about Diablo 2. Bruce overheard us talking about that game. And he said, hey, what game are you guys talking about? And uh, we said, oh, you probably never heard of it. It's called Diablo 2. Uh, I said, dude, that game is awesome. I go, what the? You know it? And he said, oh, yeah. What's your favorite class? He goes, he goes oh, I like playing the one that the, the Necrom, Necrom. He couldn't pronounce ne Necro the one with the with the dead bodies go, I go yeah yeah the necromancer yeah necromancer you know uh, just like I remember when he was playing Morrowind uh, he goes look uh, you can um, was it you can like be polite uh, you can be intimate with someone you know when when you're talking to an NPC and then I look I go no it's just intimidate you know it's one of the persuasion checks he looks oh I thought it said intimate I said no it's, it's intimidate. Anyways, going off tangents, and I just remember things. Well, anyways, um, so that's how that happened. So, jumping forward now with the Rogi, uh, somehow we started talking about PC games, and um, somehow we started discussing Diablo 2. And he was telling me, like, oh, yeah, how he's really great at it, and he's, uh, like, uh, he knows everything about it. You know, he, he, he liked to kind of brag about these kind of things. And, um... I said, yeah, you know, we're, we're okay. And he goes, well, did you guys get an enigma? He's naming all these rune words. And back in the day when we played, uh, they didn't have those. Later on, too, they they put lever requirements on certain uniques. And it wasn't like that at the Good beginning. Day. So I said, enigma, spirit, okay, insight. What the fuck are these? I've never heard of it. And he goes, oh, well, I, I got to teach you some things. Uh, so, you know, he showed us. And, and uh, there's these new things called ruins. I was like, oh, this this is neat. You know, you can it's is more depth to this game, which I absolutely love. And uh, he also introduced us to some site. I think it was called like D2 Legit or something, where you can actually buy ladder items, rune words for real money. And we kind of got addicted to that and hooked on it. And we spent. Uh, so he's been spending money on that long before I. But my brother and I, we were spending like several hundreds of dollars in that I'm embarrassed and sorry to report getting Enigma getting all this high ruins getting a shit ton of SOJs you know Stone of Jordans um, so anyways um, once you know that started to fade um, you know we got into other games you know Lord of the Rings Online Skyrim ESO everything and then I also got an Xbox you know and uh, there was a Diablo game there called Diablo 3 or Reaper of Souls but that's the expansion uh, before it was just Diablo 3 um, now this game uh, you know played on the console for a while and then got it on PC and I prefer it on PC just because I'm used to you know the uh, the mouse and keyboard. Uh, the neat thing about playing it on console, though, was you can do like a, a dodge roll. That is something you couldn't do in here. And it was a mailbox, and you could mail things to each other. Uh, I don't think on the console they had a um, where things became bound to you, bound to account. See, account bound here. If you look at that, 
What's the sound? Oh, okay, hold on. Let me fix this. Okay, here we go. You know what, it looks like this one just has a built-in perspective on. You see how it moves? I like that. You know, when I first uh, play this, boy, was it different from Diablo 2. Um, I'll say at the beginning, it was different in a slightly bad way. Uh, I didn't like how... Okay, I have to remember how do I... Okay, so that's just that. Okay. Um, you have no control of where you put your points, you know. Sure, you have your attributes. Look, now it's uh, intelligence. Wasn't it magic before? Or was it also intelligence? Well, anyways, uh, it just, whenever you level up, it uh, distributes the points according to your class, you know. So, if, uh, well, for the witch doctor, it's intelligence. So when you level up, it would put maybe three points into the intelligence and then maybe one in everything else and maybe or maybe two in in vite and then three in t intelligence i don't know exactly how they break it break it up but it's something something like that uh when it comes to the skills i can remember how to do that here. Oh, I, uh, open up the skills oh yes okay yeah it's been a while right this is what this looked like and i was wondering what this was where are my points to put in? And then I started to realize, oh, unlocks at this level, at this level, at certain levels. Oh, okay, this is how you kind of change how the skills work. So the one skill can have like five different ways uh, that you can employ that skill. So it's like, oh, okay. I was so used to the skill point system and I rather favor that. Uh, but after a little while, I started to actually dig this. I, I kind of liked it. It was different, and it became more of a um, like instead of customizing your character through where you put your points, it became more of what skills do you mix and match? What passives do you pick to mix and mix and match and to synergize with each other? Uh, which items, skill sets do you use? right uh to to work with the skills that you've chosen chosen and which uh legendary items you use too so that's how you differentiate yourself from other characters and other players uh there's still also a good chance that people will have very similar builds to you uh mainly because there are no point distribution but uh it's still okay you know um Here's another thing I've noticed though with this. In order for sets to be uh, really effective, uh, you really want to open up that six set bonus. You know, I've noticed that at higher levels, if you're only using two pieces or four and you don't have the full set, the skills just aren't effective. Whereas in D2, well, I'll say with D1, uh, there were no sets and it's very rare for, this is Diablo 1 for a unique item and here they call them legendary but uh, it started off being called as um, unique like say wind force or I think it was called demon spike armor you know um, butcher's cleaver uh, those weren't essential to prevail in combat you can just buy something from Griswold or find like an, an item something of the stars or whatever uh, and you can still, you know, uh, succeed at the game, you know, uh, in Diablo 2. Uh, you don't have to wear the full set of something. I think uh, some builds people just use maybe, let's just say I'm using this as an example, but uh, like Death, uh, is it called Death's Touch? Like Death's Touch Sash, right? It's a set, right? The, the set belt. But they're not using the full belt. Or the full set they're only using that particular belt because it had something they want like cannot be frozen you know so you can still break up the sets and use it with other unique items or, or even yellow pieces i don't have any yellows here but 
you know, magical items, uh, even uh, or rare items are called when they're yellow or blue magical items. You can still get away with using those types of gears. They no longer become obsolete just because you start getting sets and, and uniques. And that's what I loved about 2 and kind of missed that. It wasn't quite like that uh, with this. But this game was still really, really good, really great. Uh, I didn't like how it now suddenly went into a more cartoony route, you know, and number, uh, this one here is my favorite town, Act 5, the expansion, this one in tr uh, New Tristram, but you can see it kind of went a more cartoony route, so it lost quite a bit of that gothic feel you know this started going more uh to, started to mimic more of like the world of warcraft route even though i've never played it but i've seen enough that i i know what the art style uh is so now years later when news came of diablo 2 resurrected oh yes so this was um yeah shada my uh Jevazon that you saw me play earlier, so I'm gonna go back and use her. Oh, I meant to do this. Okay. Uh, so when I was showcasing Diablo 2, this was the same okay. character, but now in Diablo 2 Resurrected, uh, you know, graphics. Because you can switch it, see back and forth. But we've seen enough of that. I mean, just look at this. Back is the gothic look of everything. That gothic fantasy medieval look. I wouldn't even say fantasy. It's a dark fantasy, yeah. Hence the word gothic. And just look how detailed the character is. And, and the movement is so fluid. Folks saying that this looked better, uh, no. I mean, this, <laughs> this is, um, oh god, okay. Uh, and anyways, um, yeah, this is, again, that same happy feeling I got when I first laid eyes on Diablo 2, way back in 2001. I it all came rushing this back, look, of the look shadow. at this. Now I'll do some kills again. It's just to kind of showcase the chickens here. Now, in addition to everything I've brought up when I was showcasing uh, D2 and uh, referencing it again when I was just showing you uh, D3, uh, there are some quality of life uh, improvements to the game. Oh, miss. For one, you saw that? Auto go build pickup. I need a key. Don't have keys. Yeah, we have uh, the auto gold pickup. We have this screen here, the advanced stats. So whatever uh, bonuses that you have from gear or maybe passives, instead of you having to calculate things like magic find or faster cast rate, uh, hit recovery, it's all calculated here on this page. So that's something that we didn't have before, and I love it. Uh, so see, I can level up put my points wherever I want and here I can choose which tree I want to put things in you know my skills so I just you know it's it's it, it's great to be able to have control of that that level of customization what was kind of cool though I'll, 
uh, I have to say it on Diablo uh, 3, you can choose uh, male or female. So there's a male and female variants of uh, each class. Good day. Um, the stash here, which is the same, but it was significantly smaller. Like, to be quite honest, I think it's about like this size right here to here, you know. It, it seems like it if memory serves. Now here we have the shared stash, which, okay, it's a mess and I have to uh, fix this, and I will. Um, for something, a game where it's uh, one of the main uh, uh, appeals of the game is uh, item hunting and collecting. Uh, just sure gave you a small size stash, you know, and you, you'd want to transfer to other characters and create new characters. But now there's almost no need for that because you have the shared stash. You can just put it in here, the shared tabs, come back as your necromancer or barbarian, and then pick it up. You know, from there, so n no more do you have to drop it in a corner and and hope no one sees that and, and steals your item. You know, and you can come back. So, yeah, I mean, this is so great. Everything like the graphics are vastly improved. Um, I'm just trying to think what other quality of life issues I can uh, I can bring up besides the uh, auto pickup. Oh, there's uh. See, you can compare now. You couldn't do that before. Uh, I think there were certain glitches that they fixed, which is great. You can go ahead and check the site to see the full list of everything they, they changed, but that's just like a few of the uh, improvements. Okay, now I'm going to showcase my highest level character, my um, 53 uh, Necromancer. Uh... go and I'm only in nightmare act two but oh this is oh this is still normal okay that's okay but I can get into uh, uh, nightmare and act two is as far as it goes for me a river of flame I was just so amazed at this look at that so look at the lava here. It's incredible. I could have a lot more bigger army than that. Uh, but my favorite town is Hargoroth, Act 5, and the music here, it's just beautiful. Good afternoon. Oh, and I have some points I saved up here, 16 of them, we have 68 over here, and I'm going to go ahead and use some of this, now I did a little bit of research, I'm a a summon, summon necromancer. And uh, let me see here. Okay, so I have it at five. And one here, one here. I'm pondering whether to max one of these or both of these, the clay golem and clay mastery, but I don't know yet. I know for sure it was this. One point is enough for this. I think this one, I think I want to max as well. You know, at least a lot of the guides. I, I don't just look at one guide, you know. I, I look at a few guides, like at least two or three maybe even four different guides and see what things are like uh, the same like similar between all of them I look at that and then the ones that are different I look at their points as to why they they want to go with that skill 
and at the same time I go with things I've discovered through gameplay and my own uh, role-playing style you know the way I play for like RP purposes you know sometimes I, I, I go with all those things I, I take all those into consideration right uh, I think also this one here they say getting this to 10 is good enough but um, yeah some people max that as well but I know for sure I want to oh, a, a nice um, fun fact here is the more points you pump into skeleton mastery the more cooler your skeletons are gonna look right I, I don't know these ones here maybe I have to resummon them but if you look at them now how they look and then I do this well, let's take a look at this again look at that Jesus okay anyways um, well it just it looks like there's more depth here you know uh, anyways okay 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 so we'll go with 10 over there and I'm just trying to preemptively predict okay like what what other gear I'm gonna get like I eventually I want to get a, a spirit monarch okay so four so seven I'm not sure if it's like if it's something goes to like 12 yards it covers beyond the screen but I don't know if they I think they fix that so nothing gets affected outside of the you know the edges here of the screen um so is it like 9 or 10 I don't know Hold on, let me see something here. Okay, uh... You know, even when this gets maxed to 20, it goes up to 9 yards. I'm using a thing that uh, one of the newest members of the guild, Trajan, uh, and a very cool guy, uh, introduced me to something called, like, D2 Planner. And I tested it, and I put 20 points into corpse explosion and uh, maximum is nine radius so I guess it doesn't hurt to for now do that uh, maybe even just make it six yards you know for now and have this saved up Here's where I'm going to hold off for now because I think I have to make my strength 156 if I want to use that Monarch. I just need a 4 second Monarch, you know? How do I go about getting that? Because I can't get it in Nightmare. I have to go to Hell. I have all the ruins to make it. Dude. Okay. Hey. Hiya. Uh, check Facebook Messenger. Oh. Whoops, hold on. Alright, I guess I'll take a look at this and then I'm going to end this video and see what's up. Newt Bludger is Sean from uh, the Guild, Adventurer's Guild. Uh, another longtime uh, buddy of mine from uh, YouTube. Ah, okay, here we go. Yeah, if any of you people are interested in joining the Adventurers Guild, uh, the link is uh, in my channel banner. Oh, what is this? 
Oh. Holy shit. Fuck yes. Make my music, Blu-ray. Okay, that's very good. And Melody Time, okay. Walt Disney Animated Blu-ray Collection complete, baby. Yes! Yes, I love that. I gotta get these myself. Okay. I'm gonna end this, guys. And um, decide on this later. Hope you all enjoyed, and once again... Please subscribe to my very dear friend Todd E. Walnuts' movie channel. That's Todd E. Walnuts. And his gaming channel where he does streams, uh, which is Dagon the King Killer. Uh, and thank you again, Todd, for this very kindly gift. I know this kind of lingered on uh, uh, quite a bit longer than I intended it to, but I hope you guys all had the fortitude to, to still check this out and maybe found it a little interesting about my history uh, with the Diablo series and my thoughts on it and um yeah i hope you all enjoyed and see ya